you're one of the 43 million Americans that have been diagnosed with either osteopenia or osteoporosis, it's time to start taking bone health seriously. In this video, we're going to talk about five essential nutrients that you must have in your diet or through supplementation to ensure that you have the best possible environment for bone health. All right, let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Ed Debu, physical therapist out of Bellingham, Washington. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a repeat offender, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the five essential micronutrients that we all need for bone health. So if you were over the age of 60, and if you haven't had a DEXA yet, you may want to consider talking to your doctor about having that, especially if you have any of the risk factors. Building bone is a complex process that takes a long period of time. We have to have the right kind of strengthening and weight-bearing exercises, and we have to make sure that we have the right kind of nutrition and supplementation. In a perfect world, we're getting all the nutrients that we need through our food. But for a myriad of reasons, that's not always the case. So we'll talk about five essential nutrients that you'll need to monitor and measure. Remember, what gets measured gets managed. And talk to your physician. Remember, it's got to be in concert with a physician. Don't go taking any supplements or anything on your own without talking to your healthcare provider. Number one, calcium. And calcium is one of the main ingredients of bone. And we don't make calcium, so we have to get calcium from our food source, either as a supplement or naturally in the foods that we eat. Now there's a lot of people that don't do dairy, but they might not be getting the amount of calcium that they readily need. Calcium is needed not only for bones, uh, but for normal muscle and heart function as well too. If you don't have enough calcium in your diet, your body will go ahead and start leaching it from your bones. So it's really important to have enough calcium. What I tell my clients to do is keep a food journal for about three days to get a general idea of how much calcium you get in your diet. For example, a cup of yogurt or a glass of milk or a cup of almonds is about 300 milligrams of calcium. So keep track of it for three days. Your goal is to hit about 1200 milligrams of calcium a day. Ideally from food, but if you're only hitting maybe 800 to 1000 a day, then consider taking a 200 milligram supplement. Now you can take a calcium carbonate or you can take a calcium citrate. Both of them have pros and cons. You may have to talk to your doctor once again, find out which one is best for you, but you don't want to have too much calcium. So let's say you just had a blood test and they say, wow, your calcium levels in your bloodstream are already pretty high. Then oftentimes your physician will want to check your parathyroid, which kind of lives underneath this thyroid gland, to see if there's any nodules or anything. The parathyroid kind of works as your calcium therm thermostat. And so if the parathyroid isn't working well, oftentimes we will have elevated levels of calcium, which is not really good for us um, as it can lead to arterial issues as well as kidney stones. So make sure your calcium levels are checked and monitored by your doctor. Number two is vitamin D. Now, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, like I do, we don't see the sun very much year round. And so it's critical that anyone in this area be on a supplemental vitamin D. If you look at the literature, the recommended dosage for vitamin D is all over the board. Um, once again, you're working with your healthcare provider to find out how much you need based upon your particular level of vitamin D and how low you are, or maybe you're already in the right range and you just have to maintain that. The IOF, the International Osteoporosis Foundation, recommends between 800 to 1,000 IUs per day. Bottom line, get your vitamin D levels checked and make sure that they are within normal limits. Number three is protein. Once again, the amount of daily protein recommendation is a little bit all over the board, but the European Society of Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism recommends approximately 0.5 grams for every pound of body weight that you are. So if you weigh approximately 150 pounds, then you are approximately supposed to ingest 75 grams of protein per day. It's best to get the protein throughout the day as we can only process about 25 to 30 milligrams of protein at a time. So if you have this huge meal that has 50 or 60 grams of protein, that's gonna be really hard to utilize all of it. And so your best bet is to look at the meals that you eat, how often you're eating, and try to have a protein source in each one that is hopefully somewhere close to the amount of protein that you need per day. Now I've got some patients who are on a ketogenic diet, a high protein diet. The caution against high protein diet, especially if you have any type of kidney issues, is that the kidney does have to work a little bit harder to filter out some of the toxins and acids from the higher levels of protein. So if I have clients that have any history of kidney stones, proceed with caution if they decide to do a high protein diet. 
Once again, your physician has to be in the loop on this, but we do need protein in order to have a foundation for building solid bone. Third micronutrient that's essential is magnesium. Now the thing about magnesium is once again, we typically get enough magnesium through our food if we are eating enough leafy green vegetables and fruit. However, something that my clients don't know a lot of times until I explain it to them is that even a moderate amount of alcohol. Now the next question becomes, what is a moderate amount of alcohol? The literature says basically anything over one glass or one alcoholic drink per day. So let's say you're in that two or more a day. What happens is basically you are leaching out your magnesium in your urine. You're basically peeing out your magnesium because alcohol is a diuretic and as you start to pee more, out goes the magnesium. So you may be magnesium deficient if you tend to enjoy maybe one or two drinks a night. The second thing a lot of my clients don't realize is that if you are on a PPI, a protein pump inhibitor, like Nexium or Prilosec, common medications used for acid reflux and heartburn, that medication affects the ability of the gut to absorb and utilize the magnesium. So you may be eating what you feel like is an adequate amount of magnesium, but maybe the other medication that you're on is counteracting the ability of your body to actually utilize that magnesium. Number five is vitamin K. And vitamin K is found once again in leafy green vegetables and it's critical because vitamin K helps make the proteins that are responsible for building bone as well as helping the blood to clot. Now, if you look at the literature on vitamin K, it's a little bit mixed. There is not a definitive recommendation. However, there have been a lot of clinical trials done in Japan. Some of them haven't been of the highest quality and there have been some flaws in the study, but needless to say, in Japan they've been using vitamin K2 specifically uh, to treat bone fractures and to keep bone strong for decades. And so it's definitely something to talk to your doctor about, but we have to be careful because since vitamin K is responsible for helping the blood to clot, if you are on a blood thinner like Coumadin or Warfarin, you may not want to supplement with vitamin K because you may already have an issue with too much clotting of your blood. So once again, another reason to have your physician on board before you just decide that you want to start supplementing vitamin K. So what should you do next? The first thing I would do if you are over 50, like myself, I'll be 54 this year, is to join our Facebook group if you want additional motivational tips, um, strategies for keeping healthy and strong and fit, especially as we all age strong and so we can be as pain-free and as active as we can naturally using lifestyle choices. I'll put a link down below to the Facebook group. If you are already dialed into your health, uh, it may behoove you to check out livewell50.com. I'll also put the link down below. And we dive a lot deeper there into basically lifestyle medicine and how we all have the power within us to basically affect how we age um, through exercise, nutrition, managing our stress, and having high quality restorative sleep. So to learn more, check out livewell50.com. All right, guys, if you have any questions about micronutrients, please leave them down below. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.